Hey everyone, Samuel here. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to carry on from my previous video about OpenSCAD and trying to figure out how to make my computer less noisy. So I have had some success and I'll grab the grill and uh, the ducting and show you in a second. Um, it's a little bit noisy, I'm pretty sure you can hear it. Uh, and part of that is because of the hexagonal um, uh, cut out in the side of the case and pulling air through that makes uh, I assume some kind of turbulence and it's just uh, making excessive amounts of noise when you turn the fan the other way around <clears throat> and blow air through it it's pretty much quiet which seems pretty weird to me because I'm not understanding of that stuff anyway but um, what was interesting was <clears throat> using the duct blowing air into the case at about 600 rpm uh, it cools the gpu down so this is kind of my um typical setup with obs running i've got the streaming software running over here and uh my gpu sits at about 50 percent utilization according to nvidia smi and what's really nice is right now it's sitting at about 40 degrees 41 it hasn't budged it's sitting at that and that is cold it's cool enough that the, the gpu fans won't kick in um, so it means that the noisy fans from the GPU just never spin up in my normal kind of uh, scenario. <clears throat> However, it is a little bit noisy and so I figured uh, one way to like minimize the turbulence is to put a mesh in front of the fan to break up whatever is going on there. And I ordered some from AliExpress but it's going to take a month from to arrive so I figured why not try and 3D print one. So let me grab the duct and I'll show you what how that worked out. So <clears throat> that's it there. It um it ended up being a little bit tricky to print, uh mostly because the the slope on this side was just too much and it basically just ended up bridging. That was there was just all bridging. So it's really not that strong, whereas these parts, they're much, they're much stronger. So I put um, some tape on that just to hold it together. I mean, it's basically a prototype, but it works. I'm happy with it. But I thought what I could do is put a vertical, um, a vertical slat across the middle and maybe try and support that a bit better, just so the printing. It, I had to sit there for two and a half hours while I was printing, propping it up <laughs> after every layer. So that was a bit of a nightmare. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm happy with that. Like it, it's positioned really well. Like it sits right over the GPU. Um, the uh, fins of the GPU heatsink just basically just align up almost perfectly. It, it could be just ever so slightly higher up, maybe like five, five four or five mils maybe, but um, uh, it's, it's probably close enough. But yeah, it's still a little bit noisy. So I wanna, um, There we go. <coughs> it's still a little bit noisy, so I figured let's try and make a grill. So there we go. Look, the temperature jumped at 48 degrees just because I took that fan out out of the picture. We'll see that go back down to 41, I'm pretty sure. So if we look at the sensors, I have a CPU fan and so that's the rear case fan and the CPU fan and they're both hooked up to the PWM. I only have one PW, like true PWM um, fan header. Oh, I had, there's a CPU fan header and a CPU opt header and um, I'm being interrupted. <laughs> Disassembling the computer while I'm live streaming. That's brave. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Yeah, no, that's I'm not, I'm not actually going to pull anything else out. Uh, right, so that is the CPU fan. That fan is the one at the back of the case, and they are basically inaudible. If it's less than 600 RPM, I can't hear those Noctua fans. They're like dead silent. Um, 
The problem is that fan, that fan, and that fan, they attach to chassis one, chassis two, and chassis three, and they don't have PWM controllers, even though they're still four pin headers. So they're voltage controlled, and about 600 RPM is the minimum I can do. If the voltage, if, if the voltage is any lower, the fan literally just stops. So uh, it's within spec, but it's a little bit annoying that I can't get them down to 400. That is the fan that is currently cooling the GPU, and um, I could try and make it quieter. Fan control doesn't really provide a curve, it just has a linear uh, correlation between minimum temperature, minimum PWM uh, duty cycle, and maximum temperature, and assuming that's maximum PWM duty cycle. Uh, so I c what I would like is I would like to say uh, up until like 60 degrees, just run it, uh, the lowest PWM that will keep the fan going. Uh, in my case, it's 100. The duty cycle, like you can choose between, it's like one byte, zero to 255. And so if I run it at 100, um, it runs at about 600 RPM. So it would be quieter if I could just run that because this is not cooling the computer, it's cooling the GPU. So actually there's no, there's no temperature that I can read out of this um, data that's the GPU. I have to use NVIDIA's, this tool. Maybe there's some way I could just script this and pull the temperature and feed it into fan control. I haven't really gone that deep yet. <laughs> Maybe I'll get there eventually. So anyway, um, just waiting for China to ship ship that stuff over. So let's um, 3D print our own fan grill. Why is that not opening with? So weird. Linux, I just don't understand. And look, it's, it's even the default application. Like, what's going on? If you know what I'm doing wrong, tell me in the comments. Okay, so, um, actually let's have a quick look. I did make some minor adjustments to this one since yesterday. So let's just quickly have a look at that. In fact, there was only really one adjustment I made. The previous design that I left off yesterday, uh, it had a cylinder for the uh, tube shape at the bottom where it came out of the fan uh, bracket and that just went into a spring room am I looking at the right thing? oh yeah it's over there uh, it went into like a just a rectangle and I changed it into a rounded rect um, so when I tried to print this out basically all of that face was bridging and it's just a complete nightmare um, so this this model what I thought was I could put a division down the middle in fact why don't we just go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it because I the prototype is good enough like I'm, I'm not going to print out another one because it took two and a half hours and I can't be bothered and the current one is, is good enough so um, I think if we just put a bridge like a divider down the middle it won't affect airflow at all in fact it could make it quieter potentially um, if there's some kind of like rotational thing going on but it will definitely help that bridging so let's have a look where can we add that duct shape so I got a helpful suggestion to call this duct tube or just maybe like tube so let's just call it tube uh everything yeah it's called duct tube okay and now uh want a difference or a union uh, if we want to take an intersection of the duct tube and a let's use a z cube and I think in here I can just set I can see F to zero. That will probably give me what I want. Uh, so let's say 140x. I know I want probably like one millimeter by 140 by 140. Let's just see what that looks like. Uh, 
Okay, great, so extended on those axes. So all I need to do is move it into the center, which is given by that one. Come on, that's gotta work. No. See what I want. What am I intersecting it with? Ah, uh, plus a bit. What have I stuffed up? Did I write those numbers backwards? No, it's definitely not it. <laughs> it's off on the y axis. 140 divided by 2. That should put it bang in the middle. How much is it off by? 40, 30. It's off by about 20. There's actually one more change I want to make. Um, the holes were slightly too small, just while I remember that. I want to make these five. Five, diameter of five. Because um, I've been chewing through those holes every time I try a different configuration. Okay, uh, translate. Okay, I was stupid. <laughs> Blame it on being almost midnight. Okay, excellent. So we want to take that and we want to intersect that with that one. And then we have that. I think that will make printing a lot easier. Is it positioned correctly? It's be a little bit lower. Why does that need to be lower? One. So yeah, I noticed that when I printed it, I was expecting it to be 400 mils uh, deep or thick or whatever, and it was 402, and I was like, that's weird. Where did that come from? <laughs> so now we know where one of them is because it starts off at negative one and maybe that's my fault. What have I done to deserve that? Maybe that one? Okay, that was my fault. Is that fit? What part is that one? 
this is the only problem with this whole tool is that sometimes it is super confusing what code corresponds to what part. It'd be nice if you could click on it and we'll jump to a line number. Cylinder. One of these is that bit in the middle. That's okay. So why is it starting there? GPU stuff is irrelevant, it's just this one. I don't feel like it should be translate. Oh, hold on, I know what it is. It's because we're going in negative Z and cylinder goes in, goes in the other direction, it goes in positive Z. So we made it a height of two, so it's extending two millimeters into positive Z, which is that direction. So probably just, uh, quick hack. I think that would do what I want. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so that's where that two mils came from. Fortunately, I had about five mils clearance because I knew I'd stuff something up, so I didn't design it to be super, super tight tolerances. Okay, so anyway, I I'm happy with it. Like if I have to print out another one, I think that will be better, it will be easier to print out. So let's move on to making a grill. Actually, I saw a really awesome one on Twitter. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I was browsing the open SCAD tag on Twitter. And I saw this person had made a um, They'd made a computational kind of They've made a program that would generate fan grills, which I thought was quite cool. Here we go, this one. So I don't quite understand what they've done. We could always look at the code, but um, I assume it's just they've got some mathematical function and they're using that to build splines or something and making these uh, awesome looking fan fan girls. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, a little bit too random for my uh, sensibilities, I guess, but uh, my aesthetic, I kind of look at it and go, yeah, like there's too many holes. Like you can, you know, the, I mean, the point of a fan girl is either to stop you from jamming your fingers in the fan or <laughs> I don't know what else they're for actually and there's too many gaps um, but they look awesome so I thought that was really cool but anyway let's make it I just want to make a simple really easy to print one that's super thin and won't stick to the old plate because that's going to be a problem okay let's just grab all of that stuff and what else do I want I might just, we're going to start from that bracket because that's pretty useful. Okay. Okay, so we have a bracket. Um, <clears throat> those edges were pretty thin. So for this, Grill, I guess we wanted like maybe make it a little bit thicker like two mils is probably enough because there'll be a lot of internal support and in fact I don't imagine this is going to be hugely complicated um, that cylinder is not going all the way through okay great
Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's make a mesh. So for x is going to go from, let's have a constant. Uh, So it's centered, so I guess and we're gonna go increments of maybe let's try five mils to start with. Uh okay, so let's just do one axis to start with, and we'll see how that goes. In fact, because we could just rotate it and do the same thing, but um, maybe we want to do something, I don't know, something fancy later, but let's just try this to keep it simple. Uh, so we're gonna make a Z cube that's centered, and we want it to be, <coughs> we're gonna lay them across the X axis, we want it to be long in the Y axis, so X axis can be just, uh, start off with one, Y axis will be 100 and size, and Z, uh, it can be one again. And then we want to translate that by x0, zero, zero. Okay, and there is a really crappy mesh. <laughs> that isn't actually all that useful yet. Uh, <clears throat> so when I when I print this, uh, I don't want I don't want the mesh sticking to the print bed because it just I'll end up smashing it. I'll rip it to pieces when I pull it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to try and probably so my printer does 0.2 mil layer height. Um, so one mil gives me five layers. So I thought what I could do is I could do the grid at maybe 0.2 mils off the print bed so that it prints the grill. Um, not strictly uh, flush against the print bed um, and that way hopefully it doesn't stick too much. I guess I could do 0.4 but the more I do that the thicker it's going to get so um, but to be honest like I guess the top side can be flush because it's not sticking to anything so anyway let's have a look what is going on with that side okay so maybe Just for convenience, let's put that on the other side, like that. Then the mesh we want to so we have a cutout. We'll just make that a separate module so we can use it in two places. And we're gonna do a difference of what do I want to do I want all of that stuff Minus the cutter. No, I didn't. I wanted the other way around. <laughs> Is that what I wanted? No. What's going on? What have I done wrong? Oh, I don't want to do it. I want the intersection. No wonder I was getting confused. It didn't make sense. Uh, okay, right. So. I don't know how Slice will handle that, if it will be just making one width or if it will make a couple. And I guess I guess for strength we probably want like a little bit more than just 
one filament strand. So I guess we can just try and see what Slicer does with it. Um, right, so I don't like using X when it's not X, but it is X in this case, but um, I guess if we just duplicate this, it kind of feels like we should make that a module too. Uh, there. And it's going to be size one, one. Okay. So I actually don't know a little bit about airflow dynamics. Um, and so this might be insufficient to reduce the noise. I really don't know. And that just looks like a nightmare to print. <laughs> I should just wait for the one to come from China. It will be faster. Uh, hmm. So my nozzle is 0.4 mils. So if I make that That is two strands of filament, and my layer height is 0 0.2. So I could make that three layers high. It's probably strong enough. The other thing that um, was suggested to me was to have a little bit of distance between the fan and the ducting or the grill. Uh, to reduce the amount of turbulence that's being created. So I could, in theory, make this a little bit thicker. Um, let's just go on ahead and translate that up by one layer. So it should just be slightly offset. It's still going to stick, but um, it should just... It should not be stuck. It shouldn't be like... It shouldn't need a knife to pull it off. Because that will just all smash to pieces if I try and pull that off and it's stuck. <laughs> so what is my total thickness? I think it's two mils. Yeah, two mils. That's okay. Line 14. Unable to convert translate on def. Uh, that doesn't exist anymore. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and I think I mean I think this is probably good. We could I mean I could try just for the sake of uh, honestly I don't know how long it's going to take to print. I could try that and see how long that takes to print. Slicer will give me a rough approximation. In fact, um, Octopi is not that bad. It gives a pretty good approximation. Let's try two point five. <clears throat> this is such a simple model. Why is it taking so long? It's crazy. It's just completely freaking out. <clears throat> There's too many cubes. That is so weird. Has it crashed? Yeah, let's just try killing it. <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, I can choose the top one. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm officially stupid. Okay, there we go. Now can we render it? <clears throat> what I could do is I could chuck in. Oh, 
Okay, it's dying on this. On this. Let's try five mil fan holes. Pick the grill is. Five mils. I mean, <clears throat> I guess the point of this is to break up the existing grid, but if it's not going to do that, if because if these holes are basically the same size, it's only going to be that it overlaps slightly. Uh, so what is it? If I make it 2.5, it's four times the workload. Okay, I guess we just wait, we'll finish eventually. Look at that, 42 degrees. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with that. It's just the noise, but if I, if you know, if that can be solved with a grill, like if the fan with the ducting is not on the side of the case, it's pretty much even dead sign at six, six or seven hundred RPM. You can't really hear it. It's just that that case noise. This progress bar, 887 out of 1,000. <clears> what does that even mean? Oh, it's 889. Oh, and uh, I spoke too soon. There we go. <laughs> I mean, couldn't they just use a percentage like everyone else? <laughs> Why is it 1,000 instead of just 100%? Okay, so the nice thing about using render in here is that <clears throat> once you've done it, uh, it will it gets cached. Um, it's actually pretty fascinating, but OpenSCAD has, uh, I don't know if it shows it in here somewhere. Yeah, so it has this cache. So it's got 100 megabytes of cache, and I think it even can share it between the running processes. Um, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but basically it will cache all of the intermediate steps of your model. So if you stick these render statements in here, uh, it would have actually made maybe more sense to put one here as well. Uh, not only does it fix uh, glitches in the preview if if the if there's like a lot of intersections and differences and so on, but it will improve the speed as well because it will basically cache uh, the geometry of that node. And it's a pretty cool system, like the way it fits together. So if I come here and go render, in theory, it should be pretty quick because it will reuse all the stuff it's already got. Although I suspect this intersection was pretty expensive. Um, and you know, we could even make it more expensive by setting something like that to increase the 
<coughs> resolution of the uh, of the cutout, but let's not do that. Nine hundred and three out of a thousand. Oh, awesome. Object may not be met. Oh, come on. Seriously? Hey, okay, somewhere in here is a problem. But where? What have I done wrong? <clears throat> There is no zero width segments. There are two volumes. There shouldn't be. There should be one. Let's see if the problem manifests at a different scale. Who would have thought making a grill would be so complicated? Okay, <clears throat> there's issues, even at this. So it must be something else. Um, let's get rid of the mesh and see if it's that part. So that part is okay. Let's have a look at this. That part is okay. I don't think this makes any difference, but let's try it just in case it does. Okay, how about in fact making it zero by default probably makes more sense. So I've made the <coughs> those spokes or grill bits extend into the surrounding mesh and hopefully that fixes any issues. Okay great, that solved the problem. So basically um, there must have been some floating point errors where we were computing this grill and we were computing this exterior shape and those two faces were probably not matching up to each other perfectly um, and so that was probably causing some kind of weird issue in the mesh but just by being a little bit more clever about how we did that so we just added an extra parameter here to the cylinder uh, diameter and so our mesh actually extends let's just bring that up we can see it. So our mesh just extends slightly. Into that shape. Of course, once it's union, all those bits disappear, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay, I wonder if that was why it was taking so long to render as well. <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. Ah, uh, maybe it was. That certainly seemed faster. Or maybe not. 
I'm going to go and switch on the printer. Here we go, you can watch me. <laughs> this is exciting. I use this painter's tape, it's really awesome stuff. Okay, let's try slicing it up. It was rendered. Grill. Let's add that. Okay, and how is it sliced? Let's have a look at this. Slice is going to love this mesh. <laughs> yeah, that's very exciting and elaborate. This is going to take forever to print. Okay, great. So layer zero is nothing, and then there's that. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's going to make a ton of little squares. That actually seems like the worst possible way to print it, but um, anyway, maybe there's no alternative. If this takes more than half an hour, which it will, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Man, what is this, a dial-up modem? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, man. Okay, there we go. One hour. What's the time? Oh, I guess I can probably do it. Well, I think that's it for now. Um, <clears throat> we've done another little pretty random project. Um, I have got some coming from AliExpress, which are just a giant PVC mesh with holes cut in them for the screws. Uh, but I can't wait because I'm impatient. So we'll try this and see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, if, it, if I can keep the same fan profile, uh, and reduce the noise, I'll be happy. Otherwise, I guess the next step is T2 
to try get a real PWM controller for that fan so I can get it down to 200 RPM. Because I don't care if the GPU is 50 degrees or 55, as long as it's in at 60 and the fans don't kick in uh, on the GPU fans that is. Uh, if, if the GPU hits 60 Celsius, <clears throat> the GPU fans will spin up and they're noisy. So I just have to keep it like under 55. So I don't care if the fan that I've got spinning at 200 RPM or 400 RPM or 600 RPM, as long as it keeps it under 55 and the noise is low, I'll be happy. So yeah, we'll go ahead and try that and see what the conclusion is. I will follow up at some point in the future. Anyway, like and subscribe, hope that was entertaining and I had lots of fun. So. See you around.